In the automotive world, there are toys and there are toys, which is exactly why I'm getting an opportunity to drive one of these things. Now, if you've ever seen one of these in your neighborhood and wondering, what the hell is it? This is a 2018 Polaris Slingshot Grand Touring LE. This is their new top of the line model. It's kind of more of a GT car that you can technically daily drive. So what is this crazy Batmobile like to drive? That's what we're here to find out. So here on the Redline channel, we typically do not review vehicles like this. In fact, I've never actually done a motorcycle on the channel. It's because I don't have a motorcycle license. Thankfully, the Polaris Slingshot is classified as an auto cycle in about 44 states across America, which means you only need a driver's license to actually drive this. You do not need a motorcycle license. So let's talk a little, about the, a little bit about the design of this thing because it's definitely polarizing. It attracts probably more stares than a lot of the supercars I've driven. And that's because, I mean, look at it. It's a weird looking vehicle. The front end definitely has a look that reminds me of Batmobile. In fact, these bulbs right here, all four of them are all headlights. The low beams are here, the high beams are in the center. They are halogen uh, headlights and they're always running. Every time you start this thing up, it's got a daytime running light uh, where the headlights are always on. You have actual LED accented turn signals and brake lights. But I mean, overall, you don't really need to have, you know, really bright lights to get attention to this thing. I kind of wish that Polaris just went ahead and put LED headlights on this thing to kind of give it a more modern look. Now, the Slingshot is available in several different trims, about four of them. Uh, the base model is just called the Slingshot. This is the Grand Touring LE, which includes the Slingshade roof that helps provide some shade when you guys are driving this thing out in some bright sunlight. Now, the Slingshot is not a motorcycle, as I said, and it's an actual relatively big vehicle. We'll talk a little bit about the dimensions in a second, but I want you to check out the wheels. These are the upgraded 18-inch uh, wheels uh, at the front. Um, these are wrapped in 225 series tires. Um, which are you know really aggressive looking. At the back, there's only one wheel. So think of this thing as kind of like an adult trike. Uh, it's a 20 inch wheel in the back, 255 uh, size tires in the rear. You can go up to a 305 size tire. The GT version that uh, I'm showing you on this one kind of has a smaller wheel because they're trying to improve the ride quality slightly. Now at 150 inches long, this is longer than a Smart for Two by about four feet. It's only about six inches shorter than a Mazda Miata. So this is not a small vehicle. And it, is, it actually is relatively heavy. It weighs around 1,800 pounds. It has a 10-gallon gas tank. So looking at the interior briefly, which we'll talk about in a second, it actually has a traditional steering wheel, shifter, pedals, so which is why you don't necessarily need a motorcycle to drive this thing up. So before we get into the interior of the slingshot, I wanna talk a little bit about two things. First of all, this is the slingshade that uh, comes on this particular trim. It's extra if you guys go for the lower trims. It's magnetized and it also has a little latch, but what you can see here, it's kind of a gull wing. It lifts up to help you get a little bit more um, space when you wanna get into this vehicle. Now, speaking of which, you're probably wondering, is there any storage in here? There's no trunk that I typically show you in the back. So instead you have to pull on this little latch over here, which moves the seat forward. And there's a little bit of a storage area here where you take the key and you either lock or unlock it. It doesn't actually have a locking mechanism, but it gives you apparently between the two front seats about 29 gallons of storage. Uh, which is enough to fit, I guess, one helmet, two helmets in each one. It's nice, but it doesn't lock when you actually just put it in. You have to use the key to actually lock it. But let's walk inside the vehicle real quick and show you guys what the interior is like. Now I'm gonna obviously, I'm gonna lift this up this side again as well to give it a little bit more space. Now, this vehicle is definitely low. It's got these very large rocker sills right here that you have to 
maneuver your leg around. But getting inside, it's a surprisingly decent amount of room. I mean, this vehicle is wide. It's not like a motorcycle or anything, and it doesn't lean because it has the two front wheels, which is definitely nice. Now, it's got just a traditional key here that you actually have to just turn. And then when you want to start it, you put the clutch in, make sure it's in neutral, and push this button here to start the uh, engine up. <laughs> and it, you can see it sounds just like a GM Ecotec engine. Loud car. So this is going to be an interesting test drive. But let me let me shut the engine off, which it stinks, by the way. Lots of lots of smoke from the exhaust. As my camera guy is coughing over there. But let's take a look at the interior first, because I want to talk a little about a couple things. It actually has an infotainment system in here because this is the GT trim. Surprisingly good graphics as well. I'm really impressed. It's a touchscreen. It looks like this is maybe seven inches, so it's not bad. Uh, it has a basically AM FM stereo system, no satellite radio. It has Bluetooth streaming, uh, Bluetooth phone connectivity, um, and then looks like no USB port in this vehicle. There's a USB in the glove box. Actually, I found a USB. It's in this little glove compartment over here, which is definitely nice. The glove compartment here actually gives a decent amount of space. Now, let's talk. Let's go back to the infotainment system here because it does have factory GPS, uh, which is part of this particular trim, which is nice. It's a good uh, a surprise. It has a Rockford Fosgate sound system as well, so it sounds rel relatively decent. And Polaris says this entire interior is waterproof, so if you want, you can get this thing wet. You can hose it down. Um, which I'm not going to do because I'm afraid the buttons are going to break. But unlike most motorcycles, you do have things like anti-lock brakes, you have stability control, but no airbags in this car. You have traditional seat belts, which are technically on the other side, which does require you to wear a helmet, a full-faced uh, helmet, if you guys expect to actually drive one of these things. Um, now, the transmission is down here. It's very traditional. It's a five-speed manual. The throws are actually relatively nice. Um, I kind of wish it had a, had a six gear, but uh, the one thing that surprised me when you put it in reverse, it does have a backup camera, which is nice. The graphics are a little bit chitsy, uh, but considering this thing has no rear view mirror, it's a great thing that it has a uh, backup camera. The seats themselves, they kind of adjust forward and back. They also have a recline function, which is nice. The steering wheel also has a tilt telescoping function. If I could find the latch here, you can see here the gauges also move with the steering wheel. So it's relatively easy to get a decent driving position in this thing. Uh, but uh, you guys have been waiting. Let's get out on the road and see how it performs. So typically, I don't have a problem with opening the hood of any of the vehicles I drive. This is one particular vehicle that I struggled with, and I actually had to YouTube Google how to open this damn hood. But I'm going to try to show you guys how to open it. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass. For the first thing you have to do, you have to come over here. There's a little plastic latch here. You want to push this down. You'll hear it click. That literally unlocks the hood. And then you kind of have to walk over here to the front. And it's kind of like a motion where you're not necessarily pulling up on the hood. You're kind of pulling and pushing forward slightly. So I found my, I grabbed it here and kind of mushed it forward. Whoa. Got it. <laughs> um, you finally get the hood open. And honestly, it took me several tries. So the fact that I opened it on the first try was really uh, impressive. Now, what's going on in here? This is an Ecotec 2.4 liter four cylinder. This is the same motor that uh, you guys probably remembered in the old Saturn Sky and Pontiac Solstice. It's a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder, 173 horsepower and 166 foot pounds of torque. The engine itself revs to like 7,000 RPM, although we'll go into the test drive later. This will be an interesting one. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this vehicle weighs around 1,800 pounds. It's rear wheel drive. It only comes with a five speed manual, a traditional five speed stick. In fact, Polaris is working on an automatic for this car as we speak. Um, but until then, uh, we're going to drive the stick. Let's get out on the road and see how it all performs, shall we? All right, safety first. You got to wear a helmet when you drive one of these slingshots. And I have to admit, I have never driven something like this. And I'm a little bit nervous, but we'll get it out there and we'll see how this thing uh, performs. <laughs> I don't like the way the starter sounds because it's that GM Ecotec. 2.4 liter engine. It just has that nasty tractor noise when it starts up. But we'll set off here in the uh, Polaris slingshot. Now I'm going to try my best to speak up here. I'm hoping that my mic can capture a, a decent amount of sound. Um, we're on this gravel road here because I'm out here in the Santa Cruz mountains with Alex on autos or Alex Dykes from Alex on autos uh, testing out a couple of SUVs and Polaris just happened to send him and myself one of these to drive, and I was like, what the hell? Never driven something like this, so this should be a lot of fun. 
Now the one thing about a car that has three wheel steering, or three wheel, it's three wheels, two wheel, there's two front wheels to steer, but three wheel steering. Um, the steering itself is manual. It doesn't do a very good job of returning back to center. So you kind of have to force the wheel to go back. Um, there's no air conditioning in this car. So again, you're exposed to the elements. If it's a hot day, you're gonna be hot. If it's a cold day, you're gonna be cold. No heated seats or anything like that. We don't need any of that shit. And uh, the ride quality on this bumpy road is definitely bumpy. <laughs> now I'm a, I'm a decently young guy, so it doesn't really bother me too much. But if you're, you know, getting ready to retire, you're probably gonna get in this thing and say, "Oh my God, it rides awfully. It's a freaking toy," and you have to basically just remember that. Now this thing does get relatively tail happy when you put your foot down. <laughs> That was barely touching the throttle, just giving it a little more throttle or get throttle in second. The back end likes to step out and you'll basically have to counter steer into the, into the skid. And it'll scare you if you guys have never driven a rear wheel drive car. This thing definitely could use the fatter 305 tire on the back as opposed to the uh, 255 that this particular one has. Ouch. Back on paved roads, we'll get it out there and uh, really start driving this thing. Now, visibility is definitely interesting because, you know, you look down to your right and you're basically looking at the ground run by, and that's what makes this thing have such a strong visceral sensation. It just reminds you you're, you've got to drive this thing. And it doesn't feel anything like anything I've ever driven. This is not comparable to something like a Miata, you know, something like an open top two seat convertible because it's so different. It's a combination of a motorcycle and a bike. Now I do not have a motorcycle license, so I'm not gonna you know, sit here and pretend I know how to drive a motorcycle, but I do have a driver's license. So let's get it out here and see how she performs. See how this performs. different and it's definitely not like any other car I've ever driven this is a true treat a very true treat <laughs> the 
one thing I really wish this car had was a rear view mirror. To see behind you, you only have the side mirrors to look behind you, uh, which is basically like a motorcycle. But I have to say, with the sling shade, the visibility in here isn't as good as I'd like it to be. I find myself questioning whether or not there, I've cleared that intersection or there's nobody in my blind spot. And don't, don't forget about trying to find any driver assistance tech in this car. It's a freaking auto cycle bike, hybrid basically. And you need to know how to drive this thing. You need to have a relatively intermediate level of skill with driving a stick, with just being in touch with all of your senses when you're driving. But when you do, it kind of just reminds you why you love driving all over again. And then a lot of cars today are quickly just becoming computers. So in my years of doing all these reviews on YouTube, I have to say, I have never driven something as toy-like as the Polaris Slingshot. Even though this is the GT trim, as you guys saw from the test drive, it is very much a vehicle that will put a huge smile on your face. The visceral sounds that you get are nothing like you'd experience in something like a two-seat convertible Mazda Miata. And then altogether, it's just a completely different toy that seriously should be considered on your list if you guys are looking for something different that you want to drive on the weekends or on nice days. So if you want to add a vehicle like this into your garage, what's it gonna cost to put one of these in your driveway? Well, these are not cheap toys and technically motorcycles, I wanna say regular motorcycles start in the you know single thousand dollar range, under 10,000 bucks. This starts at 19,995 for a base slingshot. Now keep in mind, there are different levels to get uh, and they go up in about two to $3,000 increments. This one being fully loaded Loaded as the LEGT trim stickers for a tick under $30,000, which is a lot for a toy, but it does have two seats. It technically has a little shade portion. There's a decent amount of cargo area and it does a really good job at putting a huge smile on your face if you guys just learn to be careful about the fact that the rear end likes to step out on you a lot of the times when you guys are heavy with the throttle. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this really interesting review on the 2018 Polaris Slingshot LE GT. If you're looking for a toy and don't necessarily wanna go for that uh, full on motorcycle license, I highly recommend putting one of these at the top of your list. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.